Good morning and welcome back to the Arise Bible Study and Fellowship. I am Pastor Stephen and we are the Arise family and we're happy that you are joining with us today. If this is your first time uh, watching one of our videos, we have been studying the book of Genesis uh, for, gosh, about uh, three months, I think. Uh, and so uh, we have a lot of videos for you to catch up on. So make sure you go back uh, to the beginning and study from uh, the first video, which was on January 31st. Uh, and then come forward. You have a lot of catching up to do, uh, but it's a lot of great information. But we're thankful that you're joining us. Uh, we desire to help you get connected to God and His Word and learn who He is. And as we climb His holy mountain each day at 8 a.m., we invite you to come back and be a part of that. Of course, the Arise Bible Study and Fellowship happens every day, 8 a.m., Monday through Saturday. And, um, and we are really just a body of believers who love the Lord and want to learn God's Word and teach others what is true according to his will and so as we're studying god's word in genesis we're learning his will for how he's going to fix all the problems that were caused in the garden of eden when sin occurred uh and we are definitely doing that here on the arise bible study uh, so what we're going to do we're going to go ahead and open up with prayer but we do want you to get uh, a pen piece of paper and uh, take some notes and uh, and then right after the prayer we'll get started our father in heaven we come to you as humbly as we know how. Thanking you for last night's rest, Lord, and thanking you for dispatching angels to touch us, allowing us to see a brand new day. Even though it's raining, pouring rain outside, Lord, S-O-N is on the inside of us. We thank you for that. We come with a heart of thanksgiving. And now, Lord, you know what's going on in Ukraine and Russia. But we also know, Father, that you have everything under control. We don't know who hold, what the future holds, but we do know who holds our future. And we're thanking you in advance for how you're going to divinely orchestrate things in your timing. Now, Lord, touch Pastor Stephen as he shares with us today what you've given him. Pour back into him Touch everyone who's on the line and everyone who's associated with the participants on the line. We give you glory. We give you honor. We give you praise. And we're going to thank you in advance for how you, you're going to use us as your foot soldiers this day. It's in the mighty, marvelous, matchless name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Evelyn. And I love the way you said that. You said the S-O-N is shining in our hearts, and that is absolutely true. Uh, here on the Arise Bible Study, one thing that we like to do is encourage you to be the light in the, in the dark world, right? So that's what's important. As we study God's Word, you're going to see that to hold true. Uh, the more you come back and the more you learn, the more you'll have the share uh, of God's will in the earth and with others uh, in your family, the people that you love. So uh, we want to go ahead and get started. We always do a recap of our previous episode, our previous video. Uh, and if you're listening to this by audio, uh, we, we're thankful that you're joining us through our podcast and any way that you're listening to the audio, please share that out uh, as well. So let me go ahead and share my screen and then we'll get into the recap. If you're taking notes, feel free to screen, um, print screen this or take notes on, on this. This is what we, we looked at yesterday. In our last session, we looked at the prayer of faith, the power of of a name, God answers prayer, the meaning of love, the hidden pattern, and the struggle of twins. And I know that's a lot, and uh, we covered a lot. We were moving pretty swiftly through the Bible, and that's Genesis chapter 25, as we picked up with Abraham, uh, the story of Abraham and Sarah, who had a son named Isaac, who is the son of promise. Uh, and Isaac now is grown, and he had, now he has found a wife. Uh, which was great. It was a beautiful story. You got to go back and watch the last couple of episodes to get that. Uh, and so now we're picking up the story as it pertains to Isaac now moving forward as the son of promise, uh, according to God's will. Uh, and so today, what we're going to take a look at is the birth of two nations. Uh, we're going to look at how God prophesied to Rebecca, who is Isaac's wife. We're going to look at the process, the pattern, and the path. The process, the pattern, and the path we're gonna look at the firstborn birthright the firstborn birthright uh, we look at fears lies and scandal fears lies and scandal 
And we're going to look at the blessings of God over you and your family and community. And so one thing that we like to do is we like to read the scripture to understand it in context as it pertains to the people that we're reading about so that we can get understanding. There's a reason why it's in the Bible, so that we can understand how God interacts with them, the purpose for which they were created, and how God uses them to bring his will to pass. But that holds true for us as well. So when we look into the scriptures, we're looking to see what God's doing with them and how does that apply to us. It also shows us how God operates. It gives us the patterns that God operates in, and he does operate in patterns. And that's the one thing that we love to do here on the Rise is to show these patterns from one uh, one man to another man, one woman to another woman, one family to another family. There's a lot of similarities throughout the generations, and we're going to see it repeat itself all throughout as we're going through this Bible study to eventually end up culminating from, from the sin of Adam and Eve in the garden to the birth of Christ and Christ fulfilling his purpose in the earth and saving mankind from their sins. So, we are in Genesis. Make sure you open up your Bible. Let's go ahead and jump into it. We're just going to take a step back just for a second and go right back into Genesis 25, and we'll move on from there. Let me bring that up. All right, Genesis 25, we'll start at verse 19, and it says, These are the generations of Isaac, Abraham's son. Abraham fathered Isaac, and Isaac was 40 years old when he took Rebekah. Always remember ages. They're important. 40 years old when he took Rebekah, the daughter of Bethuel, the Armenian uh, of Pandam Aram, the sister of Laban, the Aramean, to be his wife. And Isaac prayed to the Lord for his wife because she was barren, which means she, had no, she couldn't have children. And the Lord granted his prayer, and Rebekah, his wife, conceived. The children struggled together within her, and she said, If this, this is thus, why is this happening to me? So she went to inquire of the Lord. So real quick, one thing we don't do is we don't just breeze past scriptures. We really want to look at the things that um, that are hidden. And it says, the children struggle together within her. So we already see by that it's twins, right? You see that? And the Lord said to her, two nations are in your womb, and two peoples from within you shall be divided. The one shall be stronger than the other. And what does it say? The older shall serve the younger. That's prophecy. This is God prophesying, two nations are in your womb. He's telling her, he's foretelling her what's coming. You're having two babies, two nations are in your womb. They will be two peoples, right? Which means separate families. They're, they're going to separate from within you and they shall be divided. It says it right there, shall be divided. Now, I want you to notice here what's happening. She went to, first, uh, Isaac went to the Lord to pray for his wife to have children. Right. So the husband should always be praying over his wife, the blessings of God. All right. And it says it right there, verse 21. And Isaac prayed to the Lord for his wife because she was barren, which is beautiful. That's great. That's a good thing. Right. But what we want to also see is this. The children struggled together with her. And she said, if this if it is thus, why is this happening to me? She's speaking to the Lord. You see that she's speaking to the Lord. So so she went to inquire of the Lord. This is good. This is this is the shows you the pattern in the process. The husband prays for the wife, the wife prays for herself and goes to the Lord. And it says, and the Lord said to who? Said to her. Right? This is one of the first times you see the wife actually being spoke to by God. All right. He he says to her and gives her prophecy. Two nations are in your in your womb, two peoples, they shall be divided, the older shall serve the younger. So now she got it. She has a download directly from the God of all creation of what's going in you and what's going to happen when they come out of you. Right? So she's going she understands this now. She's gotten this. This was not spoken to Isaac. This was spoken to her. And check this out. Because she sought the Lord for herself, which means she has her own relationship with the Lord. Even if you're married, it doesn't matter if your husband's in the Lord and all that. Well, it does matter. But what matters more, I should say, than the fact that your husband's in the Lord is that you are in the Lord and you have your own relationship with him. And we're going to see from this point forward, those who have a relationship with God and with the Lord, they're going to benefit more than those who are just in a family who are a Christian. You see what I'm saying? So sometimes your children and your descendants try to live off of the blessing that was on you, but they still have to operate in God's will and carry out his will to, to have that blessing continue down their line. All right, so uh, a little side teaching there. When uh, Verse 24, when her days to give birth were completed, behold, there were twins in her womb. The first came out red, all his body like a hairy cloak. 
So they called his name Esau. Afterwards, his brother came out with his hand holding Esau's heel. So his name was called Jacob. Isaac was 60 years old when she bore them. So Isaac was 40 when he married Rebecca. He was 60 when he had his children, which means it took, and I'm not going to jump ahead. Let me look at the facts. I'm going to jump through the fact, facts here. So let me jump, give you this. God made Isaac and Rebecca wait 20 years to have children. 20 years, but he gave them double for his trouble. He had twin boys. Now, boys, of course, were very important because that's how your family line carries forward. Uh, especially within this time period, it's very important because it meant more protection, more men to help protect the flock, the family. Um, and, and that's very important. So he got double. He got two boys, right? Um, let's see. There was something else I wanted to bring out. Uh, oh, yeah, right here. Afterwards, his brother came out. So this is the second born Esau. Uh, Hank, well, let's say it again. Afterwards, his brother came out with his hand holding Esau's heel. So that means the twins were being born. Esau came out first. And when they pulled out his legs, Jacob had his heel. He, he had grabbed onto his heel and he was pulled out. So it was almost like both babies were delivered simultaneously because they were connected that way. All right. Okay. So, and that's a critical thing because even in the womb, they were struggling. Remember, they were struggling in the womb. And even when they came out, they were, they still was a little bit of tension there. Right. All right. So we're going to drill down a little bit as we always like to do. Let's take a look at the drill down. The Hebrew name Esau means hairy. And we saw where it says that he came out red and his whole body had hair all over it. I know he looked the sight. Uh, <laughs> all right. And uh, let's look at the second drill down. And that is the name of Jacob, which means supplanter, supplanter, which is often interpreted as someone who seizes, circumvents, or usurps. Seizes, circumvents, or usurps. Now, in this culture, in the Hebrew culture, they oftentimes name the children who, who they are in terms of their essence, like who they really are at their core, right? Uh, or something that they've done. And so we see that the, the older brother Esau's name, because of the way he looks, he's red and he's hairy. So his name is Esau. Um, the name Jacob means supplanter because when his brother was being born and his brother was first out, which means he's supposed to be the favored one, Jacob had his heel and had, um, had was trying to usurp that birthright. He was trying to come out at the same time. Uh, and so that's something that is going to play out and it's important because we're going to see not only is that the character, but it's the nature of the people, right? So we're going to see that as we move forward. All right. Verse 27, when the boys grew up, right, they're getting older. Esau was skillful, was a skillful hunter, a man of the field, while Jacob was a quiet man dwelling in tents. Isaac loved Esau because he ate of his game, but Rebecca loved Jacob. All right. I'll start right there. So we see that the uh, when the boys grew up, Esau was a skillful hunter. Now, remember, we're coming off of the story of Abraham. Abraham is the father of our faith. And Abraham was promised to have a son that God would bless that, you know, the nations in the world would be blessed because of his descendants. And so Abraham had a son. It was said that Abraham uh, and, and Sarah had to wait in, until they were good and old uh, to have a child. And because it was taking so long, they decided to, you know, actually it was Abraham's wife, Sarah, decided to say, Abraham, look, I'm barren. I can't have children. Why don't you have sex with my servant who's an Egyptian and her baby will be my baby. And so he did it. And the baby came out. The baby's name was Ishmael. And so Abraham had Ishmael. And then eventually God blessed Sarah and Sarah had Isaac. So you got you got Ishmael's the older and Isaac's the younger. And you look at the similarities. Abraham. Um, Ishmael became a skillful hunter. And here we see second generation from Abraham, Isaac's sons. The firstborn is Esau, and Esau is a skillful hunter. And we're going to see something similar. We always look for these patterns. Uh, and I, and I'm, I'm not going to jump ahead. Let me, let, let's just keep going, and we're going to see what's going to play out in just a second. Uh, so I got a question for you. We're going to read over that, and then I'll go over the question again. When the boys grew up, Esau was skill, was a skillful hunter, a man of the field, while Jacob was a quiet man dwelling in tents. Isaac loved Esau because he, he ate of his game, because he ate of his game. But Rebekah loved Jacob. Let's take a look at the fact. What is the fact? Jacob loved Esau, and Rebekah loved Jacob. And this is the question for you. And this is how you study the Bible. You should always wonder, why? Why was it that way? You would think that both parents 
would love both children equally, but we know it's not true. You have your favorites. You love your children equally, but there's one that has more favor than the other, and it just it's just the way it works out. So, Isaac loved Esau because what? He ate of his game. Well, that's why. Because the father was proud that his son was a great hunter, and that when he cooked his food, he loved his food. And so they had a really good kind of, if in the modern day terms, it would be his son knew how to barbecue. His son would come over and always cook, bring his dad some meat. And his dad loved eating meat, and his son could cook it up right. And so he loved that son while, while at the same time, his other son was in the house playing on his computer, writing code and, and doing stuff on his computer, right? He was in the house, dwelling in the tents, it says, right? So that would be a modern day look at that. But the next question is, why did Rebecca love Jacob? Right? Why did Rebecca love Jacob? Let's take a look backwards and we'll take a and we'll understand a little bit more. Let's take a look backwards. And we're gonna look at Genesis 25, 23. And the Lord said to her, Two nations are in your womb, and two peoples from within you shall be divided. The one shall be stronger, right? Than the other. And look what it says. The older shall serve the younger. I submit to you that is why. That is why, because Rebecca knew where the blessing was going to go. Rebecca knew it was the youngest child that God's hand was going to be on and that he would become the new son of promise. And he, she was told that by God. No man told her that. And so certainly as they grew, she always was watching and looking out for Jacob because she was protecting the son of promise. And you're going to see that play out again. But the point here is the father loved the son who was hairy and out in out the field and was a hunter, a man's man, right? He's out in the field doing all of that stuff. And then Jacob was in the house with his mom, chilling in the house with his mom, right? And so we see why it's because of the promise that was given. And in her heart, she always kept that in her mind, especially as she saw Esau out here killing things and doing all of that, but saw Jacob as a very kind and gentle and wonderful person. It's different. All right. And we're going to see something here. Now we're going to see the brothers interact because they're men now. They're older. Once when Jacob was cooking stew, verse 29, once when Jacob was cooking stew, Esau came in from the field and he was exhausted. And Esau said to Jacob, let me eat some of that red stew for I am exhausted. Therefore, his name was called Edom. Jacob said, sell me your birthright. Sell me your birthright now. Okay, so this is the picture. And we always try to envision the actual situation he's Esau's been out hunting all day he didn't find a thing he came back empty-handed he's hot he's tired and he's frustrated because he didn't he didn't find anything when he comes back his brother is actually already cooking a meal and he's hungry he's he probably hadn't eaten all day and so Esau and it says and Esau said to Jacob let me eat some of that red stew for I am exhausted it says it right there now Jacob saw that as his moment and his opportunity and let's take a look at the fact Jacob is the youngest, but he is very shrewd. He leverages the hunger of his older brother to get him to sell or give up his birthright. And and this, if you're in a family with siblings, you know some of this happens. You know, let me have, you know, if, if, if they want something you have, you say, I tell you what, do one of my chores for me then. And, and it's always negotiations happening. But this is critically important because we need to understand something about what a birthright is. You may have never heard of what a birthright is, but we're going to go over that. And let's drill down. A birthright. In the scriptures, birthright usually refers to the right of the son born first in a family to inherit his father's possessions and authority. Two things, possessions and authority. In ancient Israel, for example, all the sons received some of their father's property, but the firstborn received a double portion and became the leader of the family. And so, do you think a birthright is important? Absolutely, a birthright is important because you became the leader, you got the double portion, and you not only got his possessions, but the authority over your whole family uh, as the next leader once your father passed. And we see here that when, when they're interacting, Esau is now in his tiredness, is beginning to think about giving up his birthright, right? So let's see what happens next. Verse 32, Esau said, I am about to die. Of what use is a birthright to me? I am about to die. Of what use is a birthright to me? Jacob said, swear to me now. And so he swore to him and sold his birthright to Jacob. 
Then Jacob gave Esau bread and lentil stew, and he ate and drank and rose went and went on his way. Went his way. Thus Esau despised his birthright. All right. So let's look at the facts. This is the fact. This is something else. Esau was a good hunter and loved by his father, but loved himself more than he loved his people, their traditions, or their God. He even despised their traditions and sold his birthright because it meant nothing to him. All he cared about was himself, gratifying himself. And that's something that that's something that we got to be really careful about, even in this time period, that we don't get to a place where we get so tired that we actually give up the thing that God's given to us because we're tired, we're frustrated, we're hungry, right? And and when you get to the place, as a matter of fact, there's a uh, when I do business coaching, there's something I teach. It's called halt. Sometimes you need to halt, and you should write this down: H A L T, and um, and and it's an acronym. And so halt actually means the H means do not make decisions when you're hungry. The A is angry. The L is lonely. And the T is tired. When you're hungry, hungry, angry, lonely, or tired, halt. Stop making decisions. Check yourself and say, "Whoa, I'm not in the right space right now. I'm I'm gonna take a step back." Even in conversations, like, "Look, I'm gonna have to call you back." Or you're talking to somebody, "Hey, look, I need to go. I need some space right now. I need to think." You need to halt because that's the wrong time to make decisions because your flesh is so um so magnified in the way it feels that it will betray you. Right. You are your spirit. You're not your flesh. And sometimes your flesh can get to a place where it's stronger than your spirit in that moment. And it can cause even more problems. You know, something that I learned in my walk with Christ is time and time again, I seemed like I was going back into the cycle of repeating uh, an experience or trial. And uh, and I was really asking God, like, why is this going on? And and uh, and one thing that he revealed to me was that whenever that situation comes up, you have a certain tendency to do a thing and that causes the consequence. And, and I said, well, what do I do, do about that? And this is what he gave me. He said, do not let the moment dictate your future. Do not let the moment dictate your future. In the moment, your decisions and actions actually dictate your future because that's what the consequence is from that. And so even in the moment, you got to know the power you have to say, no, look, I'm not going to repeat this. I've been here before. This is all familiar to me. This situation, this conversation, this moment is familiar. And I know what happened last time when I responded this way. And I'm not going to do that again. I'm going to take control of myself. And I'm going to allow God to work through me in a different way this time. Because I'm not going to let my flesh answer. I'm going to let my spirit answer. And that's always the best answer to give. Because it blesses us and those around us. Alright, so let's keep going. And we see this birthright thing is important. Because remember, Abraham is the father of faith. And he had Isaac. And Isaac is the son of promise now. And then that's going to pass on to the next son of promise, which was Esau, because he was first born. It should have been him. But God told, we already know, his mother that it is his brother that's going to be the one. And so even growing up, you know, you know, Rebecca had to be telling Jacob, hey, look, this prayer, I'll pray one day, especially when Esau's out there acting up and causing issues. And the mom is like, look, see, your brother, he doesn't even deserve to be the leader of our family. You're the promised one. And I tell you why. And I'm sure she told him that God said to me this and this is on your life. So in this moment, you can see that Jacob was waiting like a hunter himself. Oh, I got to wait for the moment to get that birthright from Esau. And it just so happened that this is the moment that it happened. All right. So. Um, all right. And so we're going to jump into Genesis chapter 26 and continue. And we're going to take a look at God's promise to Isaac. All right. Now, there was a famine in the land besides the former famine that was in the days of Abraham. Now, I do want you to understand something as we're reading. God is doing a work in the earth, and he's working through these men, but there are patterns in here. And so I want you to see this, right? All right, so we're going to go back over that. It says, now there was a famine in the land besides the former famine that was in the days of Abraham. This is the fact. God allowed a famine in both Abraham's life and his son Isaac's life. The question that you have to ask yourself is why? All right, and we're going to move forward because as you move forward, you're going to hear this repeat again. The same pattern will repeat again as we read forward. So anyway, let's keep going. Uh, and Isaac went to Gerar to Abimelech, king of the Philistines. 
All right, so it's time for a drill down. What does that mean? Let's take a look. That name should be familiar. If you've been watching our videos, that name should be very familiar to you. King Abimelech, because this is not the first time he entered into the Bible text. All right, so let's, let's drill down. The name Abimelech is formed from the Hebrew words father and king, or father king. Abimelech means father or king, or father king. All right, and he's the king of who? The Philistines. Do not forget that. You need to make sure you highlight that, and that's going to come back into play big time in the Bible story of bringing Christ to uh, to uh, to the earth. So the King Abimelech is king of the Philistines. Let's keep going. All right, and again, we are in Genesis chapter 26. We're in verse 2. And the Lord appeared to him and said, Do not go down. And we're talking about Isaac. The Lord appeared to Isaac. Do not go down to Egypt. Dwell in the land of which I tell you. Sojourn in this land, and I will be with you, and will bless you, for for to you and to your offspring I will give all these lands. See, God's about to give out some land, and I will I will establish the oath that I swore to Abraham your father. Now Abraham has passed, right? And now he's getting this from God. I will multiply your offspring as the stars of heaven, and will give to your offspring all these lands, and in your offspring all the nations of the earth shall be blessed, because Abraham obeyed my voice. And kept my charge, my commandments, my statutes, and my laws. Good God Almighty. God laid that whole plan out before him. I mean, you just can't get any simpler than that. Look, let's take a look at the fact. The blessing that God placed on Abraham was passed on to his son Isaac. God speaks to Isaac and gives him direction and prophesies over him his will. Prophesies over him his will. Now let's look at the question. This is the question that you got to answer. One of the questions you got to answer. What did God promise to Isaac? What did God promise to Isaac? And the way you look at that is how many I wills do you see in the text? So we're going to look at verses 2 through 5 again and let's highlight this stuff. And the Lord appeared to him and said, do not go down to Egypt. That's instruction. Do not go down. Dwell in land which I shall tell you. Great. I know what to do and where to go. Sojourn in this land and, and here we go. First one. I will be with you and will bless you. Boom. Number one. For to you and to your offspring, I got to highlight this, offspring, I will give all these lands. That's a promise. That's a promise. So we know God promises after that. And I will, second I will, I will establish the oath I swore to Abraham your father. Boom. Number two. All right. I will multiply your offspring as the stars of the heaven and will give to your offspring all these lands. All right, number three, promise number three. And in your offspring, all the nations of the earth shall be blessed. Look at that. Continuation of the promise. You got that? Because Abraham obeyed my voice and kept my charge. Now look, this because, whew, I'm going to tell you all, you got to get this. This is a qualifier. You don't get God's blessings just because he's going to bless you just because. No, you get God's blessings because he ordained it. Because his will is being done. And he's saying, look, I, if you follow my will and my plan, because you do that, this is what I'm going to do. And he said, I, now he's trying to, he's really trying to have, help Isaac out. If you want all the I wills, then do the because. Abraham obeyed my voice, number one. Number one rule for us as the children of God, obey his voice. And kept my charge. Number two, we need to keep his charge. We're going to talk about all this. Number three, and my commandments. Look at all this stuff. These are instructions. And my statues and my laws. Let's see how many that is. Five, how many, uh, because one, two, three, four, five, six things you need to do in order to flow in God's will in your life. Because we see that is how God operates in Abraham's life and how he's going to operate in Isaac's life. And he gives them the reason because. Now look, let me let me break this down to you. This word right here, because, is two words. Let's split it. B and cause. We say because. Now check this out. He's saying, the things that I'm going to do for you is the things that you have to be and will be the cause of why I'm blessing you. Be because this is what you're being. And then what does he want you to be? He wants you to be, obey, he wants you to um, obey his voice. He wants you to be obedient. What else? He wants you to keep my charge, my commandments, my statutes, my laws. Look at all these different things. 
there is a God has a charge, God has a commandment, God has a statue, and God has laws. All of that. That might be hard for y'all to see, so I'm going to unhighlight that. I didn't like that color. Abraham uh, obeyed my voice, and that's what's important. And so that's what we're learning here on the Arise Bible Study. This is learn how to hear God's voice and to be obedient. And God's voice is his word. God's voice is his word. It is the written word. It's what we're studying right now. And as we study their lives, we get to get informed about our life. And that's important for you to know. All right, so let's take a look at what happens with the king, King Abimelech. So Isaac settled in Gerar. When the men of the place asked him about his wife, he said, She is my sister, for he feared to say my wife, thinking, lest the men of this place should kill me because of Rebekah. Why? Because she was attractive in appearance. I got a question for you, especially those who've been following the, following the teachings. Where have we heard this before? She is my sister. Isn't it interesting that both Abraham and Isaac had beautiful wives, absolutely beautiful wives, and the land they traveled in was in the land of King Abimelech, the Philistines, and both of them, let's check it out, both of them did the same thing. The fears of the father was the same fear of the son. The fear of the parent became the fear of the children. That's what you got to get. We can pass down generationally these curses. We can pass down these habits, these thought patterns, these fears. And that's exactly what happened. And I'm sure, I'm sure the, that Abraham, um, um, that Abraham uh, told that story about what had happened to his, you know, speaking to Isaac, what happened to his mother when they first got to the land with King Abimelech you know, as a testimony of God's goodness and how the king blessed him with, you know, bless Rebecca, I mean, bless um, um, Sarah with a thousand pieces of silver and gave Abraham, Abraham livestock and land and all that. So I'm sure he told that story. And so Isaac had that in his mind. And, and so when his mommy came up, he feared the same thing his father feared, thinking that they're going to kill me and take my wife. Let's look at the second fact. And, and, it, and it comes down to exactly what was put in the in the in the, in the uh, chat generational strongholds. That's right, Tally. You're exactly right about that. All right, so let's take a look um, at the second fact. Isaac lied and tried to deceive the men out of fear that he would be killed. Let's look at it again, verse six. So Isaac settled in Gerar, did what God said. When the men of the place asked him about his wife, he said, "She is my sister." My question to you is: Is she his sister? No, she's not. She's more like a distant cousin. For he feared, see that? Fear. He feared to save my wife, thinking lest the men of the place should kill me because of Rebecca. Right? Because she was absolutely beautiful. So, Isaac lied and tried to deceive the men out of fear that he would be killed. Now, we know that his father, Abraham, said the exact same thing. She is my sister to the exact same king, by the way. Um, and it was half true because they had the same... Uh, they had the same father, but different mothers, right? So that's different. Um, here, she's a distant cousin, and he's just straight out lying. Abraham could get away with that a little bit, but 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 Isaac is lying. Why am I taking a second to tell you that? Why, why am I even putting emphasis on that? Do you know why? Because the fears of the father was the same fear of the son. Generational curses, generational strongholds. What you sow is what you reap. Don't forget I said that. What you sow is what you reap. And let's see what happens because Isaac lied and tried to deceive those two things. And so I'm going to just highlight that because that's important. Lying and deception is what he just sowed. And let's see what kind of harvest comes because of that. When he, when he had been there a long time, Abimelech, king of the Philistines, looked out of the window and saw Isaac laughing with Rebekah, his wife. So Abimelech called Isaac and said, Behold, she is your wife. How then could you say she is my sister? Isaac said to him, Because I thought lest I die because of her. Abimelech said, What is this you have done, not to you, but to us? To us, one of the people might easily have lain with your wife, and you would have brought guilt upon us. Now, if you have stayed with us on our studies, you know that when Abraham had this problem with Abimelech, Abimelech actually had taken his wife and was about to marry her. And God told him, look, you better not touch her or I'm going to kill you and everyone in your household. So Abimelech fears God. All right. And, and, and knowing that that Isaac almost did the same thing. And, and because he kept that a secret, 
almost caused the same problem. Now remember what the name Abimelech means. Remember, let's go back. Abimelech means, where's that? Abimelech means father king. So he's always caring about his people. Like, don't bring no sin into my household. Don't bring no sin into my community. Like, I'm taking care of my people. Do you want us to die? Like, why did you do this? He, he has that father heart for his nation, which is good. It's still, that's a good thing. All right, so let's look at the question. Let's look at the question. Does, does this seem familiar? Where have you seen this before, this interaction? And we already know where we've seen it before, and let's look at the fact. This is the fact. Abraham, Isaac's father, did the exact same thing with the exact same king, which is, that's really odd, quite honestly. You typically don't see that throughout the whole Bible, but they stayed in the same area. The same king was still alive in Abraham's time and Isaac's time, and that's exactly what happened. The father did the same thing. The son did the same thing the father did, and this is the question. Do you see a pattern? Do you see a pattern in the way they interact with each other, the way they interact with those outside their family, the way they act as a person, right, leading their family? Do you see a pattern there? Because it's important because that stuff passes forward. So always look for similarities and patterns. Let's look at verse 11. So Abimelech, wanted, so Abimelech warned all the people saying, whoever touches this man or his wife shall surely be put to death. Good for Abimelech. That's a good, good move on his part. Verse 12, and Isaac sold in that land and, repeat, and reaped the same year a hundredfold. Look at that. Boy, oh, I received that, Lord. Come on now. To sow a seed and reap a hundredfold. What a blessing. The Lord blessed him, and the man became rich and gained more and more until he became very wealthy. Very wealthy. So what is the fact? God blessed Isaac abundantly in the land of the Philistines, just like he blessed his father Abraham, with one difference, I should say. There is one difference glaring difference Abraham was blessed because the king feared God and didn't want to die and didn't want his family to die when he finally released Sarah because he did take Sarah and, and, and the reason when he finally released her he felt compelled to bless them and send them on their way and so they got the thousand pieces of silver they got the land they got the livestock and so Abraham increased because of that blessing now we see with Isaac Isaac actually actually got to work so seeds and actually he had the inheritance from that blessing with him so he had a leg up um and and then and then what he did in the land actually god blessed a hundred folks so you can imagine that's just a tremendous blessing uh if you take a thousand pieces of silver and multiply that times a hundred you know that's a supernatural increase right there so anyway he just said that he sold seeds he his livestock got blessed you know his his uh, produce got blessed his his servants, his family, like everyone was just getting blessed that year, that same year, the same year, it says right there. And um, and so that's something that if you if you really think about it, the if we go back up here to what God told him, that I, oh, I unhighlighted it, that's right. Um, he, he told him right here, he said, to do what I tell you to do, where's that part at? Um, oh, right there. Because he obeyed my voice, obeyed my voice and kept my charge, my commandments, my statutes, my laws. That still holds true today. God says he's a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. Right? And so if you're doing that, God will bless you. And if there's some things you haven't done, repent and get back to what God wants you to do. Um, doing what God wants you to do. That's what's important. All right? Um, and so he, he, verse 14, he had possessions, flocks and herds, many servants, so that the Philistines envied him. So look what happened. God blessed him. Right? And then verse 14, he had possessions, flocks, herds, and many servants, so that the Philistines envied him. So this is this is what you got to remember about this. The king blessed Isaac, but the people envied Isaac because of God's favor on his life. And that can be true for you. You can be blessed by your boss or blessed by the leader of a thing, but it's the people that's the problem. And then, and that repeats. It, it is it's something that you should expect and don't don't get too caught off guard about. All right, and so we'll end here with this last one, 15. Now the Philistines had stopped and filled uh, with earth all the wells that his father's servants had dug in the days of Abraham, his father. And that means they were living in the land. Of course, you need water. And so they dug all these wells and got all this water during Abraham's time. And when Abraham died, the Philistines, because they envied Isaac, his blessings, they went and filled all the wells up with rocks and dirt so that they couldn't get no water out. That's exactly what happened. And so this is the question. Why did the Philistines do this 
why why did the Philistines do this? I don't know why I put that too right there. Uh, also, what do you think God thinks about how his chosen is being treated? Important. And what do you think God is going to do about it? And this is even in your own life. Because sometimes you, you want to fight back, but you got to remember God has a plan. And if, if these people are fighting against you, you know what performed against you will prosper, but God's still going to handle his business, right? Because we're his children, we're his chosen. But we're going to see this. Why did the Philistines do this? And this is the people that, remember I told you, remember Philistines, that's going to be, it's going to come back up. And why do you think God thinks, of, what do you think God thinks about how his chosen is being treated? So that's where we're going to end it today. And we're going to take a look at those answers tomorrow. Uh, and we're going to look at what happens as a result of that. Because God has a plan, and certainly as we move forward in God's promises, if we get resistance, uh, it also helps us to get closer to God, but God has a plan for that as well. So, let's go ahead and uh, unmute yourselves, and uh, feel free uh, to share anything that stood out to you today. We definitely want to hear your voices and get your feedback, any questions or comments, or anything that stood out. You know, Steve, one thing that, good morning, everybody. Hey, one Sadie stood out to me was in the very beginning the the blessing that God gave Isaac you know Abraham said sent the servant and said go find Isaac a wife and then the I this the servant prayed and said okay make the, the the woman that comes to me blah 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 right so but she turned out to be barren so she was a blessing given unto Isaac, but it wasn't all peaches and cream. She was barren. And so that made, you know, Abraham say, well, how am I going to be the father of many nations? The, the wife we chose for my son is barren, right? So this mm. is repeating once more what happened with Sarah being barren. And so it took 20 years and I had to, I have to imagine the doubt during that time and, and notice that the Bible doesn't say that Isaac went the route, his father did the long route, mm -hmm. but it still turned out that he was given two children, like his father was given two children. Mm -hmm. And um, so to me, I was drawing those similarities because a lot of times when God blesses us, we think everything's supposed to go smoothly for us. And it's hard not to think that because we're children of the Lord. And the Bible says that we are blessed and that um, there are so many promises given to us. So why is it that we can suffer? You know, and so we're able to see even back then that the people still suffered and they were highly favored of God. Mm. So true. It's so true. And that's spoken from a woman that has had twin boys. So she knows exactly what she's talking about there. And the reality too is, you know, we want things now and we want it the way we want it. And, and, and that's part of the process. And I think that's why sometimes even in the blessing, there's sometimes challenges because we live in a fallen world, number one, and we have sin. We're born in sin. And we'll be dealing with that until our bodies get regenerated. So we got to deal with our flesh. Um, and so we got to deal with that not only in ourselves, but in others. And the fallen nature in other people causes other problems uh, around us. And so not only in our, our family, uh, spouses and children, but you got extended family, you know, mother, father, cousins. You got all those, their issues, too. Um, and so even as you're being blessed, there's still challenges, right? And you live in a land with other fallen people who may not even know God which is a whole new level of problems that you got to deal with. So, um, but in the blessing part is knowing that God is a provider, right? He's Jehovah Jireh, our provider, and he answers prayer, right? Um, and he's also, the Bible says he's Jehovah Rapha, the God that heals. Uh, and certainly the barren womb of a woman needs to be healed so that she can fulfill part of her calling. Um, and not all people, not all men are, are called to be married. Some, you know, the Bible talks about that. And not all women are called to have children. So don't get, get me wrong if you don't have any children. Uh, but the point is that God has a plan for your life. And as long as you get in alignment with his will uh, and whatever comes your way, you just be content about it. You can flow through the problems with, with crush other people. You actually would make it through that storm stronger because you'll learn obedience to just love the Lord in the midst of your challenge. So, yep. Amen to that. All right. Evelyn, you have something? 
I have a quick question for Saudia. Okay, um, Saudia. With her twin boys, are there um, big differences in their personalities? That would be a positive, Miss Ellen. Okay. <laughs> okay. Like night and day. Really? Yes. They have been diff very different from the time they were born, not only in looks, but in disposition. Mm. Um, and it's very interesting because I've always said that the oldest son, which they call twin A, mm -hmm. he went head down like at five months. Mm. He, he resided for the next, you know, four months upside down. Wow. Because he was he was ready. He was going to be first. And he's like that today. Yeah. <laughs> Even in his mind. Yes. And we wow. have pictures of his brother kicking him uh -huh. <laughs> because his brother was feet down. So his brother kicking him and um, causing him, you know, trouble in the wound. OK, it is hilarious when we would see that. And so. Um, but, you know, the blessing is that after they were born, the oldest one, no matter how I laid them, always migrated so that he was touching his brother in like a protective way. And he mm. always protected him, even now to this day. That's amazing. And, and as their That's uncle. Just God I, and his magnificence. Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly right. But as their uncle, I can tell you this, that... Um, <laughs> This story almost mirrors, it's amazing, I'm now thinking about that, almost mirrors what's in the text, Sadia's story, because not only were they fighting in her womb, but the, the, her second son, whose name is, um, um, don't tell me, Jaden and Justin, 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 <laughs> I'm their uncle now, I almost forgot their names, Justin is that hunter, oh my gosh, he will go out and he's the aggressor and he's going to play football and that's him. And Jaden is the house dweller, man. Jaden, even though he could play basketball and football, he'd rather just stay in the house to himself and be with his mom. And it's a similar kind of story. It's pretty cool that that's, that's the case. Mm, yeah. All right. So anybody else uh, have anything they want to share? Anything that stood out to them? I just wanted to say quickly, it's amazing how Isaac was uh, blessed a hundredfold. Mm -hmm. So when we're obedient, we, we, we just sit in awe of what God can do. I mean, things are cyclical. And when you pay things forward, it definitely comes back through your children and your grands. Yeah, and that's, that's the reality. If you are walking according to God's will and your children are following that, you have built a nice foundation for them to be able to build on top of. And they certainly can inherit those blessings if they meet the qualifiers. They do the because part. I Look, Evelyn is blessed because she kept my commandments and she she obeyed my voice, and right? And so then your daughters and your grandchildren come in and they're like, you know, my grandma is blessed. And it's like, well, she's blessed because... And then they go, well, then that's what I'm going to do. And then if they follow, your daughters follow that and your grandchildren follow that. Every generation gets stronger and stronger and stronger. And, they, and the blessings multiply because because you're being obedient. God is rewarded those who diligently seek him. And, and certainly if you're obedient, God will bless you. So, all right. So anybody else have anything that stood out to them that they want to share before we move on? I do just really quickly. Um, when we spoke about um, Isaac um, telling a whole lot to King mm. Ben. I'm sure in my mind, you know, I'm trying to relate things in layman terms. And I'm like, I'm sure King of Benelik is like, dang, first it was your father, now it's you. Like, we get yep. together. Exactly. And also identify that as, as we, you know, spoke about the generational stronghold and the implications of that. And I wonder how, like what Isaac's disposition was when, you know, Abraham which we talked about, I'm sure shared that story with him. And if he probably felt like, nah, that's not going to be me. But then lo and behold, the situation occurs and he tells a whole lie. I mean, his father did lie, but it was a half lie, which we know is true, it's still a lie. But at least at that point, Sarah was his you know, half sister. Whereas Rebecca, won't your sister? So um, it is so important that we identify strongholds in our lives um, any generational strongholds and break those 
off of our bloodline. So we don't pass that on to our children. I mean, I don't have children yet, but anything that I'm dealing with, I don't want that to be transferred to them. So it's important that we identify that because it may seem minuscule, but it can come back in a way that's even greater. And oftentimes the stronghold, each generation, it'll get worse. So um, I, I, I implore all of us to identify those strongholds and break them. be that bloodline breaker. Yeah, you, you're right. That's something I had to do when I came to Christ. I am so glad that I came to Christ before my children were uh, were born uh, because all they saw was me and my wife uh, walking in the Lord. So a lot of that stuff was broken off before they could understand who their father and mother was. So, you know, they got to see a pattern, a better pattern to follow uh, because of that. And I'm so thankful for that because I would be reaping the harvest of those seeds sown. And it's sad that, you know, if you are... If you are in the world or worldly, even as a Christian, and you have children later on in life when they become, you know, young, young teenagers or young adults, you see that you see yourself in them, the way they're acting and like, where did you, why are you acting like that? But you remember, I used to be that way. Right. And so sometimes those things happen because you you gave them an example to follow. And sometimes it happens just because sin in their own nature. They, you know, they, you know, with television and all this stuff. They see other people doing stuff too, so they get it that way too. So, but yeah, that's very important that we don't we pass on the blessings of God um, in the in the right pattern to live holy before Him uh, in our own lives to our children, so that we don't look like hypocrites. By the way, right? So we're we're actually modeling the right life to live, which Abraham did, and Isaac is now doing, right? And so now we're seeing this this uh, their sons uh, and the grandsons play out their part in this story. So re really good point there, Telly. All right, so uh, does anyone have anything else before we move on? If not, we can go to our inspiration. And um, all right, so we'll go. We'll move on to our daily inspiration as we always do with our church mother, Evelyn Booker. <laughs> Good morning again, everybody. Today is March 17th. It says, come to me for understanding since I know you far better than you know yourself. I comprehend you in all your complexity. No detail of your life is hidden from me. I view you through eyes of grace. So don't be afraid of my intimate awareness. Allow the light of my healing presence to shine into the deepest recesses of your being, cleansing, healing, refreshing, and renewing you. Trust me enough to accept the full forgiveness that I offer you continually. This great gift, which cost me my life, is yours for all eternity. Forgiveness is at the very core of my abiding presence. I will never leave you nor forsake you. When no one else seems to understand you, simply draw closer to me. Rejoice in the one who understands you completely and loves you perfectly. As I fill you with my love, you become a reservoir of love, overflowing into the lives of other people. That's Psalms 139, 1 through 4. Praise God. So what I was hearing in my spirit was uh, don't hide. That God is, is, is a good, good father. We call him Abba, Father, actually. We don't just call him God. We call him Father. And, um, and the other thing is that, you know, God wants us to talk to him. He wants to be an active participant in our growth and our development. Uh, and so know that you can talk to him because he's he's a good guy. He knows what we're dealing with. It's not a shock to him, our challenges. So just have more conversations with him than you have with yourself. You need to write that down. I need to have more conversations with God than I have with myself. Because sometimes we'll talk to ourselves all day, every day, and sometimes even out loud. Um, and, uh, and so we definitely need to make sure that we're talking with God, our Heavenly Father, and, and talking through the things that we're challenged with and the things that are happening good and bad. Uh, but just have a relationship, which is important. So uh, we want to encourage each and every one of you guys to come back uh, every day. We have we're making we're making a commitment to learn God's word, and we we want to know His will for our life, uh, and we want to have our hope restored in this fallen world and all the things that's happening around us. Sometimes it could really chip away at your hope, your joy, your happiness. But you'll find that as you read God's word, that will be restored. You'll be re-energized. Your mind will be renewed, and your life will be transformed. Because you're learning God's will for your life and, and his plan, you'll see it rolling out across the earth, despite how things look. So we encourage you to come back every day, Monday through Sunday, 
uh, Monday through Saturday at 8 a.m. Eastern Standard Time to uh, join us. If you're watching this by recording, if you're watching uh, or you're listening to the audio, thank you for doing that. We thank you for your support. We thank you for your prayers. We thank you for uh, encouraging others to get into this Bible study and do it together. You can just take your family back through right from January 31st all the way forward because we started in Genesis chapter 1 and we're moving all the way forward through the Word of God. Uh, so it'll be a great, really uh, good uh, deep dive study for you and your family and your friends. So, all right, so let's go ahead and pray and then we will uh, send you guys on your day. Uh, Father, we just thank you for this day. This is the day that you have made. We will be glad and rejoice in it. I thank you every person that hears my voice, hears your voice today. I thank you that those uh, facts that came out in the Bible study, those things made an impact in our life. It gives us a revelation of who you are and how you're working in the earth. We thank you, Father, that you love us, that you have not left us nor forsaked us, Lord, that you care for us deeply and you're guiding us in our life. It is you that has planned out our life even before the foundation of the world. The fact that we are here means we have a purpose. The fact that we are listening right now to this video and, 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 and watching this video means that you're telling us something. And, and we pray by the Holy Spirit, the Ruach HaKadosh, Lord, that you would reveal to us uh, as we get off this uh, this call, as we start watching this video and this audio, that it would echo in our spirit the thing you want us to hear. That it would be a seed planted, a seed watered, and that you would give increase in our hearts and minds that we might have understanding and wisdom for the days ahead. Father, I speak blessings over every person that is listening to the sound of my voice. I thank you for the plans you have for their life. You have plans that are good and not of evil and, and plans to give them a hope for their future. And I thank you that that is true, Lord. And we give you all the glory, honor, and praise for you alone are worthy to be praised. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. God bless everyone. And we will see you guys in the morning at 8 a.m. Have a wonderful day. Bye, everyone. Bye, everyone. Bye, everyone.